Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack. Today is another LEGO Weekly News update and there was a lot of big stuff that happened this week, but let's check out the biggest story. This is the reveal for all the new Star Wars Rogue One sets. So far, I've been hearing a lot of positive feedback on all of these new sets. I, for one, am getting really excited for September 30th. So let's go through each of them individually, and I'm going to start with the smallest and get to the biggest one. This first one is the Imperial Assault Hover Tank 75152. It's 385 pieces and will retail for $30 US, 35 pounds, or 40 euros. We've got one awesome build for the hover tank, a lot of intricate details kind of all over the body, and it looks very, very solid. This is the only set with the Chirrut Umwe minifig, which is... Uh, uh, Donnie Yen's character, so I'm definitely gonna get this set. And the new helmets for the Imperial Hover Tank pilots look pretty awesome. Next up is the ATST Walker 75153. It is 449 pieces, will retail for $40 US, 40 pounds, or 50 euro. The minifigs included will be an ATST driver. I believe those are new printing details on the body for him. A rebel trooper who seems to have a really cool helmet piece, and Bayes Malbus that's holding a gigantic gun. The build for the ATST looks pretty good. I'm not sure if the vehicle itself is a little bit different in the Rogue One movie than it was, say, maybe in the Empire Strikes Back, but the legs certainly seem to be more poseable than our most recent ATDP set. Moving up, we have our TIE Striker, set number 75154. It is 543 pieces, will retail for $70 US, 60 pounds, or 70 euro. This makes it actually the worst part to price ratio out of any of these new Rogue One sets, but the TIE Striker build itself looks pretty awesome. The wings seem to fold up and down like it's got a landing mode, and it comes with four minifigs. There's a Rebel Trooper, a really cool Imperial Shore Trooper. We have a TIE Pilot that, correct me if I wrong, has the Ultimate Collector series helmet, so that piece is no longer exclusive. And we also get an Imperial ground crew that seems to be uh, directing the traffic, so to speak. I like the look of the TIE Striker, and the Imperial Shore crew minifig is really awesome, but because there's no specific characters and this is the worst price to part ratio, I have a feeling this is going to be one of the less popular sets. And moving up, the Rebel U-Wing Fighter 75155 is probably going to be one of the more popular ones. It's 659 pieces, will retail for $70, 75 pounds, or 80 euro. This is sort of our main protagonist's ship. It's got a really nice classic look to it, and it seems to be able to hold quite a lot of minifigs on the interior, and I bet it's got a few play functions as well. This is also the only set that's got our main two protagonists. We have Jin Erso plus Cassin Andor. Included as well as a really cool looking U wing pilot, we've got a Rebel Trooper, and Bistan. So this is certainly going to be one of the more popular sets, but I don't know if it's going to be the most popular. Something tells me that everybody's going to want this set. This is Krennix Imperial Shuttle 75156. It's 863 pieces, will retail for $90, 80 pounds, or 100 euro. The build for the shuttle itself is great. It's got that sort of reminiscent feel of maybe a uh, stealth bomber or something. The wings fold down in a similar fashion to other Imperial shuttles, but I think one of the main draws to this set are actually the minifigures included. This is the only set so far where we get K2 So. Plus we have Bodhi Rook Pow, our main antagonist of the movie, I believe, Director Krennic, as well as two probably very sought after minifigs, the Imperial Death Troopers. Guaranteed they're gonna come out in a cheaper set in the next wave, but so far this is going to be the only set where they come in. Anyways, those are the official images and all of the information we have on the five new Rogue One sets, plus here are the pictures on the three new buildable figures. This is Sergeant Jin Erso, set number 75119. I'm probably the least excited about this buildable figure. I just don't think the body looks particularly good here, and the face also doesn't look very recognizable. A nice build for the gun, I suppose, but the K2SO buildable figure, set number 75120, looks a lot, lot better. Generally, these Technic pieces and all these nice armor molds just look a lot better for a robotic figure, but also the proportions of the body just look really nice, and he comes in at the highest part count of 169 pieces. And my only gripe with this is that he doesn't come with any sort of weapon. But anyways, the last buildable figure is the Imperial. Imperial Death Trooper. This guy's going to be super popular. This is set number 75121. It has 106 pieces. And by the way, all of these buildable figures are retailing for $25. And this guy looks very good. He's got an awesome mold for his helmet. I believe those are some extra sort of ammo packs on his shoulder. And his blaster rifle looks pretty similar to previous ones that we've gotten from other buildable figs. And there we have it. Those are all eight of the new Rogue One set images. They're going to be available September 30th. That's Force Friday. 
So get up early, there's gonna be a huge, huge line at all of your local Lego stores, I guarantee it. And we're pretty stoked about the new sets here at Brick Vault. Now there was also another massive Lego Star Wars reveal this week. And the reveal wasn't technically this week, but this is the first time that we're really allowed to show the pictures, and so now I'm really gonna start talking about this Lego Death Star reveal. It's set number 75159, it's 4,016 pieces, and will retail for $500. Now, if you haven't heard already, or if this thing is starting to look strikingly similar to something, that is because this is pretty much the exact replica of set number 10188. That's the Death Star set that came out back in 2008, and that set was only retired less than a year ago, and it seems we're getting pretty much a re-release with updated minifigs, and maybe only a couple of extremely minor changes to the actual build. Now, I've been going through the forums and hearing a lot of people say a lot of the same stuff about how this is really just a kind of a terrible situation. The original set was released at $400, this one is getting released at $500, which is a definitely a price increase, even if you do account for inflation. And it just shows very little effort on part of the LEGO group in terms of kind of creating a fun and interesting set. Now, I don't think this is a bad set. Now, the original version stayed on shelves for eight years, and no set stays on shelves for that long if it is a bad one, but this kind of just seems like like an obvious money grab for LEGO. It's being released essentially in conjunction with the release of all the new Star Wars Rogue One sets, and that whole movie focuses around the Death Star. So I guess LEGO figured it would make sense to still have a LEGO Death Star set on the shelves, but here it feels like they put the most minimum amount of effort into this set as possible. There are some exclusive pieces made for minifigures here, but historically speaking with the uh, last Death Star set, I don't think there were any exclusive figs released there because they're also classic, they eventually just come out in other sets later on. I don't feel like getting too much into the exact specifics of these minifigs and all their exclusive pieces. My personal theory is that the only thing that's gonna remain exclusive in terms of minifigs is that new blue astromech droid. So if you're considering getting this set, please try not to base your decision on any of the exclusive figs coming out here, but instead just ask yourself if you really want this set for its build and its features. Wow, and with that, we're actually done with LEGO Star Wars news for the week. That was quite a bit of stuff. But believe it or not, there were more official reveals this week. And here's another one that uh, people have been generally disappointed about, and that is the Toys R Us Bricktober exclusive minifigures. Brickset as well as Just Too Good have revealed four new minifigure collectible packs from Toys R Us, the exclusive ones. But you will see very quickly that there's nothing exclusive about these figs. Most, if not all, of the parts used to make up these figs are not exclusive, and it's argued that quite a few of the pieces on these minifigs don't really match up very well at all. I think the worst example of this is from that Cops and Robbers one, where the detective clearly has printing on his legs that is supposed to match up with a longer coat on the top of the torso piece. Anyways, these things are coming out in October for Toys R Us. And speaking of October, we now have the LEGO Store calendar for this month. And the most important bit of news that I think is, yes, you can get double VIP points for the entire month of October. October 4th and 5th, we'll get a LEGO VIP monthly mini model build of a werewolf, set number 40217. October 1st gets you the Creator Winter Holiday Train that's available for all of the public on that day, and September 30th gives public access to the Star Wars Death Star set. There are, of course, plenty of other things located on the store calendar, and I will leave links in the video description below, as well as links for every single thing I'm talking about in this episode. Now there's one more sort of big story that came out this week, and that is the end of Mixels. The Mixels theme lasted three seasons, and the last series, Series 9, hits shelves in October, and that's going to be the last series you're going to see. Unfortunately, this line just wasn't selling well enough, but I believe it was pretty popular among custom builders because Mixels was responsible for printing a lot of new parts that people really liked, and they also released a lot of molds in different colors that we never got before. Brickset does an article on this, and there's uh, some information there worth reading, especially if you are a Mixels fan. And I believe it is now time to move on to our LEGO Ideas segment. If you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website in which you submit your own LEGO creation in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set. This week, one new set got 10,000 votes, which means it's now put into the review stage. This is Lovelace and Babbage by Studbot. This build somewhat documents the creation of the first computer that was attempted back in the mid 18th century. Everything is built in black, gray, and white very monochromatic, which the builder says is intended to evoke somewhat of a Victorian era. Personally, it reminds me of the Adams Family, but this is yet another one of the science-related builds that's been accepted by LEGO Ideas this season. 
So congratulations to Studbot for the 10,000 supporters achievement, and let's check out the cool custom creations of the week. Here's the build Petra by Vitriolum. This microscale temple looks fabulous. There's a lot of really nice details that are going on here, but what sticks out to me the most is sort of the seamless integration of Technic pieces in the LEGO. Those tan connector pieces make up the columns, and it's a wonderful use of those gear pieces that make up the dome at the top. This is Team Toe Pagalis Pod Racer by Cicely Fritzvold. What we're looking at is an interpretation of what the Ultimate Collector Series version of this Pod Racer would look like. Love the shape of the cockpit, not an easy build by any means, but certainly the most eye catching part is that great design for the paneling on top. They evenly drape over the tops of the engines, makes a great shape, and it makes me wish really badly that we get an Ultimate Collector Series Pod Racer. Here's something that was trending on Reddit. This is a guy that made a Lego leg for himself while waiting for his prosthetic. This is called Rusted Fiat 500 by Gabrielle Zanotti. The build itself is great looking, but what I really like here is that this artist renders out all of these Lego builds digitally. As in, you're not looking at a picture of a Lego build right now, but instead just a digital rendering. There's quite an atmosphere captured in this image, both with the build of the car and the wonderful decrepit surroundings. Okay, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like this video or subscribe. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault.